Hey, good morning, everyone. I am coming to you from a beautiful home in Santa Fe, and you've seen a little bit of it. You got to see the outside the other day and just the foyer where all my plants were stored. I've gotten all the plants out of there, and my new and wonderful friend, Catherine Lott, <laughs> artist, uh, life coach, property manager, what else do you, grandmother. <laughs> she is going to take us on a tour. Uh, we met her briefly in the gallery yesterday, and I apologize because I know you couldn't hear her very well. I heard that from a couple of people. And Catherine has, you don't have one of those wonderful things you were talking about with the gold. Mm -mm. Okay. Sugi, no. Yeah, <laughs> well, she's going to tell you about this because I think it's so important for us all especially as we get older, so many things break in our lives for so many people. And it's such a beautiful concept that she was working on. And first, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to go on a tour. So good morning, everyone. I'll have to look at this later and acknowledge everybody. But I'm going to turn this over to Catherine. Hello. Well, hi again. Nice to see you, my little new new friend. I know. And I just want to make sure before Catherine starts, can everybody tell me about our volume levels? Because we're wearing microphones today. And can anybody tell me how the sound sounds? Hello. Hello. Testing. <laughs> so no one has said anything yet. So okay. you just start talking, Catherine. I, we just well, instantly bonded. I and, know. And I, I know. want you to be my lifelong friend. Oh, well, I'm so grateful to Linda Walter for introducing us. And we are sitting in her beautiful home. She and Paul Walter have had this home for years. And it's been a blessing to so many families. Yes. And um, anyway, yesterday we were speaking about art and how art can actually heal you during times of crisis and um, how you can transmit a healing energy through art. And in particular, what we talked about was a certain type of art called kintsugi. K-I-N-T-S-U-G-I. And I learned about this art form from a dear friend and actually in Martha's Vineyard and he um, was going through some brokenness of his own and sent me a photograph of an actual piece of pottery, Japanese pottery, that had been broken and mended by using this ancient method. Of, it's the, called the art of the golden repair. And so I, um, I just was captivated by it. It was before COVID. And usually these notions come before the event. And so I just did an entire series of Kintsugi art uh, on, on panel that was flat. So I just emulated the ceramic um, glaze and then used gold leaf to do the actual repair. And it was really cathartic and wonderful. And, and I sold a lot of pieces through um, Slate Gray Gallery. And they're on that website. If, you, if anybody would like to go look at them, it's slategraygallery.com in Telluride, Colorado, and Kerrville, Texas. And so that led me to even doing workshops with women primarily, where we brought our own piece of pottery and they had to break it and then put it back together. And some of them went back like that, no big deal, and others. They, were, they thought they were ruined, which is kind of what life is like. Some things go back, and we can use them again, like this. And other things get ruined, we think, and we want to throw them away, but really they get repurposed and they're more beautiful when you can change your perspective. And so that's, that's the whole idea behind Kintsugi, is that our scars, actually, when we aggrandize the broken parts of our life, that's when it's really beautiful and interesting. Wow. Were a lot of these women seeking some yes. sort of nurturing? Well, you know, what happens in art therapy is things come up. You know, you get triggered. You didn't know it was there because it's in our subconscious mind. It's buried a lot of times. We spend a lot of time using our defense mechanisms to uh, keep at bay that kind of pain because we think if it comes up, it might kill us. And the ego says, no, 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 don't you go there. You keep a solid stalwart face and you pull yourself up from your bootstraps and you just keep going. But it's those moments that are tender that catch you by surprise where healing can really occur. Wow. Yeah, super fun. 
And this this can happen with men and women. I of mean, course. You know, maybe women more recognize yes. that they're broken in many yes. ways. I know I am. <laughs> well, men, it's a dismantling because men are armored. They had to put on an armor as a little boy not to show their feelings and don't you cry and I'll give you something to cry about. And so they spend a lot of time armoring. So when I'm working with men, I'm peeling away layers and, and creating a secure space for them to actually feel something again. So it's different for men. Yeah. But it's still beautiful. Wow. Yeah. And we don't have any of those pieces here, but I think you mentioned that you have a painting here that yeah, you I have did. an Aspen painting. And Aspen's, the meaning behind that for me is just that they're all one organism. And, you know, some of the ancient teachings say there's really only one of us here. We're just all an aspect of Creator pushed out for Him to play with. Well, I don't know if, if many people heard that yesterday because it was, um, uh, you know, and a lot of ambient, I think, was kind of drowning you out. So uh, for those who don't know that, and I didn't really realize that either, even though I, when I was young, I lived in Colorado. And of course, I would pass all these groupings of aspen trees. And of course, there's the very, very famous painting by Ansel Adams mm -hmm. of... Photograph, yeah. That's um, beautiful. Did I say painting? That's okay. You've got me thinking about painting. Yeah, that's, that's okay. <laughs> um, photograph, of course. Uh, of the aspen trees, and it's so striking, and uh, I didn't realize they were all connected. I just thought maybe, you know, like when I went to the Redwood Forest yeah. in uh, Big Sur, and I learned that the, the seed pods that drop straight down from the big redwoods, they put up uh, seedlings yes. all around the tree, mm -hmm. and they are exact clones. Yes of the, ma the mother tree. Mm -hmm. And so are the aspens all clones? Mm -hmm. So it's... Is that... A, it, uh, so there all, there's only one other larger single organism, and I believe it's a mushroom. It is. Yeah. It's in Oregon. Yeah. So the same, same principle. I mean, I'm, you're way more versed in botany and you know agriculture <laughs> than I am but I'm trying to learn I don't know if it's a rhizome I'm not sure what you call it but um, you know the quaking aspen is what they call them because the leaves wave at you they're friendly they're they I love the bark because you know people write their love letters to each other in the bark and you can you in, in actually in Telluride you can look way up and see where two lovers carve their initials back years before, yeah, and and it creates that black scar, mm -hmm. and the whole black and white thing right now is super important to me because this is all happening in one organism. You know, it's all one, and the reason that the black shows through is that it was rubbing up against its neighbor, or it was scarred by someone or was, carving into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was a sacrifice of love to someone. Right. Well, yeah. I have mixed feelings about <laughs> carving into trees. I'm sure. But I, but I know, I know, I can remember when I felt like doing it, you know, when I was a teenager. Um, but uh, John Haffey, uh, our moderator, just said mycelium, and the mycelium oh. is what mm -hmm. is in fungi that connect it all together, and when yeah. you actually get a mushroom, the mushroom is just the fruiting body. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's not in and of it. It's sort of like the apple yeah. or the pear. You know, it's it's just like the conditions are right, and they literally come up for one morning, mm -hmm. and then they shrivel. And it's, yeah. There's it's, a whole documentary on that fabulous, fun, fantastic fungi right now. It's fascinating. Wow. There's some that that they have created that are supposed to eat all the plastic in the ocean. Like, how great would that be? I mean, nature is here to, to serve us in a way that's so beautiful. But when we can feed her, even just a little bit, it's amazing what happens. Like the prolific bounty that comes from just a teeny bit of attention. I know. Like last year when I had to sell my garden and the realtor said, oh, we've got to cut this garden way back. We'll never sell a house with all that foliage in the front, you know, and I had to. I mean, we just scalped those fig trees and those pineapple guavas, just mm -hmm. back to almost nothing practically. And when I went to visit uh, over there, they were just huge. Yeah. 
they absolutely exploded. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what they're going to look like next year because she's going to need to take care mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. take care of that. Um, Rebecca at Food Forest Next Door just mentioned she has a channel, uh, relatively new channel called Food Forest Next Door. She's doing a permaculture bar garden in her backyard in Louisville, Kentucky. She's a scientist nice. and she teaches at the Kentucky Let's Science go. Center, which mm -hmm. is this fabulous interactive science center for kids to go in and learn about science and gravity and earthquakes and gardening and soil and oh my gosh, mm -hmm. this place is amazing. Anyway, she mentioned that the um, aspen trees are, the colonization of the aspen trees are one of the first to come back after wildfires. Fires. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, Jamela is here from Trinidad, and Jamela was saying yesterday in a comment that her husband, his last name was Whirl. Oh, really? Yeah, same spelling. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huh. So, maybe, maybe a relation. To maybe, those. maybe. Yeah, um, I noticed you looking at these. So these are my sister's paintings, actually. Okay, and we're going to take a look at those. Yeah, they're very um, spiritual to me, too, because she painted the agave. Um, and the agave is a self-sustaining plant. I mean, it is amazing what it produces. And that's a barrel cactus, but this agave over here mm -hmm. catches the rainwater and feeds itself. It's It can survive in the desert forever, and it, and, and the, you know, we get tequila and pulque and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. How is it different, though, than other cacti? Agave, well, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's a different type of genus or whatever, but it, it, it looks kind of like an aloe, but I don't believe, I think an aloe is more of a succulent. I think this is more of a true cactus. Mm -hmm. um, but it does provide all kinds of, kind of like yucca can provide, like the women and in the cultures where yucca grows, they actually chew the yucca to ferment it into, and they spit it out, Ooh, and it ferments from the bacteria in their mouth, it ferments into alcohol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and is this available for public consumption? Uh -huh. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, a little like the pulque is the first round of, of the juice that's been fermented, I think, I believe, and it's extremely potent. And so you can see men in San Miguel and different places in Mexico kind of standing up, you know, asleep with, <laughs> their, with their pulque cup in their hand. But, um, but anyway, so in my family, we've always identified, you know, with how beautiful these plant, these beneficial plants are for us, medicinal or whatever. Right. There were a bunch of medicinal herbs at the Santa Fe Farmer's Market yesterday. Well, uh, what else did we want to talk about while we were still sitting? Was there something oh, else that we covered yesterday that I wanted to we recover? We talked about everything. I know. we. Have. Yeah, we've been all over the place. Um, you know, I mean, I think just being in Santa Fe at this particular time has been so beautiful. We had a huge rainstorm last night. Which and I didn't today, even, wasn't even aware of. Yeah, it was like thunder and lightning and hail. And I was like, I hope you're all right back over there. But um, now it's just beautiful and the sky is clear and blue and you know, you're ready for the next leg of your journey. And so yeah. what a great way to send you off, off I guess. to Lubbock, which is your hometown. Yes, that's where I was born. Yeah, and that's how you yeah. know my friend Linda. Yeah. And Linda and I go back to 81. Uh, just uh, before we start our tour, just so I can hear you really well, can you tell me about sort of the history of this kind of architecture in Santa Fe? I mean, this is the old town. Right, yeah. So we're actually on an old borough trail. Um, that's why the streets, as you notice, are super narrow. And then on one side of the street is the acequia, which the street is called acequia madre, which is the mother's ditch. And it's where the water would come flowing in and there's uh, little gates that would trap it. And it was where they would actually wash their clothes, get their water for their food, you know, for cooking and that kind of thing. And where did so, this water come from? Rainwater? The arroyo. Mm -hmm. Is that there's the, arroyo, the, like the rivers. That when it oh. rains, there's all kinds of catchment systems. There's an arroyo that runs back behind here, but that's one of the channel, channels that would, you know, kind of be part of how that how these people stayed alive. I in mean, the this desert is the desert. Yeah, so and I mean, different times of the year, you know, you can have really amazing plants if you're here to water them. Mm -hmm. So many things grow here that don't grow in a lot of desert climates like hollyhock 
and to the Chimayo is beautiful. Chimisa, just gorgeous, like desert blooming plants all over. Wow. Um, yeah, and then of course the, the aspen and the pine trees and all of that are prevalent. We've got a big old crow out there right now. <laughs> I yeah, I heard that. Yeah, they, uh, they're always here. I, I heard that <clears throat> from my friend who lives here that I saw yesterday that when it snows here, uh, it really doesn't stick around long. Mm -mm. And, and, I, and yeah, that sometimes. reminded me of something that I heard. Um, I'm just turning this around for a second. I was just going to remind everybody, if you haven't already read it or listened to it, Gabe Brown's book, Dirt to Soil, is an absolute must. He talks about how he took his farm in North Dakota, which, of course, you know the, the climate is harsh there. They have... They have long, cold winters, and um, I think he said they only have about 16 inches of rainfall. Don't quote me, I, but it's not a lot of rainfall. And one way that they have, that they learn to, uh, on their farm, because he's all about regenerative agriculture, and they plant certain flowering plants that actually hang on to the snow. And the snowpack is a big part of their irrigation for the year. And I, 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 I tell you, I was in tears by the time I got to the end of this book. It's so powerful. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. I'm not getting anything for saying that except maybe you'll take that book and it will make a big impression on you, no matter what your scale. You know, whether you're just growing a few pots on a, on a balcony or, or a patio or whatever, or if you've got a big farm, uh, you know, so many people would benefit from his message. And that's why he committed several years ago to travel five months out of the year to go to the uh, speak at all these various speaking events. And I met him at Acres USA. Rebecca, uh, or if, if you're still there, when that's when I met Rebecca in Louisville. It was in Louisville and I met him. Wait, I take that, yeah, no, it was, yeah, that's where it was. It was in that big room, yeah. That's where it was, I met him. He was speaking there, and I hadn't yet seen, I think there's also a documentary. Did you say you, see, you saw the documentary? Kiss the Ground, I think. He was oh, on that's, that. and then. Oh, he's in Kiss I the Ground? He, I oh, think okay. he's in that one, but he's also a big part of another one um, called uh, This Strange Earth, maybe, with Will Smith. Okay. Really good. Okay. Uh, he's everywhere, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't be surprised. Um, at any rate, um, what was I going to say? Oh, in Louisville. And I asked him if I could visit his farm, and he said, absolutely. And several times in the book, he says, he says that, that uh, complete strangers that are in need of his advice and help will call him up, and, and he'll be in the field, and he'll answer the phone. And, and they'll go, I, I, I can't believe it's you. I can't believe you answered the phone. You're so, you're so famous or whatever. But he's very down to earth, and he is so... He is absolutely committed. He has taken this. He has taken his um, outreach uh, as a personal commitment uh, a per, uh, to, 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 to talk to as many people as he can and uh, to try to rebuild and regenerate the earth. And um, so I can't say enough great things about it. Now, I just wanted to show you these paintings since, since you heard all about them. Uh, your sister is also a painter. Yes, Shani Lott is her name. Let's Shani. see. I was talking. What is her name? Shani Lott. You want to stand over here? <laughs> Shani. Shani, like Fanny. ShaniLott.com uh -huh. is her website. Okay. And mm -hmm. Shani, she lives in Austin. She's an amazing artist. Oh, my gosh. Wait, is she using gold leaf too? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. that is beautiful. Look at that. I don't know if you can see. Yes, you can. The reflection of the background is gold leaf. Well, th I think that's actually, yeah, is no, that, there is some gold leaf. Yeah, there's gold leaf and gold paint, I believe. Uh, sometimes, you know, I used to uh, spring for the big bucks for paintings for my etchings with gold leaf because they really make everything so elegant. It's very expensive and chips easily, especially on a wood frame. Mm -hmm. It might be different on a canvas. Yeah, it, it's stuck. And... Uh, they also have white gold, and so when I was packing up my paintings to leave my apartment, 
Like gold leaf. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they actually use silver leaf. Do they use silver leaf? Yes, for... sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah, she's a very talented. Well, why don't you show us the aspen trees and oh. then, is that close by? It's right over here. Okay. Yeah, you can kind of go through the beautiful living room and okay. I see you had a fire last night. Yes, possibly. I wasn't too good at it. Ah. <laughs> okay. So this is the main living room and then this back here is this wonderful... Okay, before you, before you go that way, I'm just going to... We need a light on you. Oh. Kind of dark on you. That's okay. That's okay. This is the main living room? Mm-hmm. Yes. And as I mentioned before, this, this is owned by my friend and her husband and another couple. And this is a kiva, if anyone's not familiar with southwestern architecture. It sticks out into the room and it provides a lot more radiant heat than a fireplace that's kind of flush to the wall. What I find interesting is all over this house there are step-ups and step-downs and you really have to <laughs> be careful. Now, did you do the painting on these, or did that other person do? So, um, that's Tracy Dockery, and actually her daughter did this door right here. And it's so cute. The talent just never ceases in their family. Um, and then this is Linda's fabric that she has printed in England. Um, Look at the ceiling, so, first of all. What is above that? So, you've got... So, that's Vegas and... Um, little uh port i can't remember the name of those things they're they're like um, staves they're cedar staves above it oh no this is just a flat roof there's nothing above it okay yeah there's this beautiful skylight so, but wow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh that's gorgeous oh i want that you know that pretty and then this is the fabric that's tracy dockery and um linda have made together Oh, I didn't realize that. Yes, and it, they make it in England. Tracy is her illustrator. Tracy has illustrated all of the Ramona Quimby books, um, the new ones, Beverly Cleary. So lots of talent with these incredible people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to look at this. I had something with the roosters, but I don't remember what happened. And look at this. This lamp is just so perfect with that fabric. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, who goes around and finds all these beautiful things? Oh, Linda does. She's oh. very tiny room in the house that isn't heated, so it's better I noticed that. in the yeah, <laughs> better in the in the summer. It's a yeah. beautiful place to sit and enjoy the backyard in the summer. I and love for it. this neighborhood, this backyard is huge. I was so. going to say it looks very, very cramped, the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But you, it open, this one opens up to this huge backyard. Mm -hmm. And you see birds out there. So gorgeous. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, and then this is the aspen, one of my aspen trees. Ah, this Thanks. is your painting. Yes. So we've got him right there <laughs> and right here. Ah. Uh huh. So you have two aspen trees. Is there the tendency for more sprouts to come up um, in a yard? I yes, mean, yes, but not so much. I think we end up like probably weed whacking them down, unfortunately, because when they're small like that, if we clean up. But I mean, if we get them to a certain start, then they'll they'll definitely take off. I love the texture. Obviously, that's one of your big things that you do. Yeah. Is the, you add on the texture, and you don't often see such a deep, you know, the painting on such a deep frame. Mm -hmm. That Do was you... one of my very first ones. So I have cabinet makers that make my frames for me, and that one just turned out to be thick like that. But so. it's perfect for that, because uh -huh. whenever you put a um, painting in front of a couch, mm -hmm. Very often it's just way back there on the wall and the couch is sitting out and it doesn't really relate and go together. Mm -hmm. Of course, some of these things look very, very old. Okay. Yeah, Linda's quite a collector of really fine art. She has such a great eye. And my daughter says, you know, the difference between elegance and something that's exquisite 
is Linda. <laughs> I said, you know what? You're exactly right. Oh, oh. yes. Uh, you pointed this out before, but this is one of Linda's fabrics. Yes. Um, I think I messed those cushions up last night and didn't okay. get them fixed That's all right. perfectly. Yeah. She just had this recovered, and so it's... Um, so she still has a lot of this. Is she still manufacturing the fabric, or...? I believe so. Okay. Uh -huh. And who painted the wall? Tracy. Oh, Tracy did uh -huh. this one. Oh, gosh. Isn't that beautiful? It's just stunning. You can see her whimsical, like, children's book illustration background. But she painted many, many beautiful homes in Manhattan for years. Manhattan?